Welcome to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. Together, we're exploring the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Tony Hare is an independent certified coach, teacher, and speaker with the John Maxwell team, author and inspirational speaker who lives in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, a master's degree in pastoral counseling, and a doctorate of philosophy in Christian counseling. Dan DeBruler is a retired U.S. Army communications specialist and has spent more than 20 years encouraging listeners through Christian radio. And good afternoon. We are good, glad to have you with us today as we get together and talk about, well, not just your life, but our life as well as we dig into God's Word and see what He has to say about the very things that we are facing even today, almost as if God knew. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, Dan. Hope everything's going well with you. It's great to be here once again uh, with you to talk about your life, our life. And most importantly today, um, it came to my attention even more so in each day and uh, with the work that I do with youth and their families. Um, i got gotten a, a couple of phone calls between last week and uh this week, just Monday, yesterday, and uh, those calls uh, were related to our youth and uh, uh, gun violence and death uh, as a result of um, our youth having encounters uh, with authorities, our youth having encounters with themselves, other their peers, put it that way, with their peers. And I think it's something that uh, we probably need to pay more attention to because as we begin to try to share things with uh, one another and with the um, public about uh, parents and their children and putting the family back together, Again, because the family is almost in like Humpty Dumpty who sat on the wall and had the great fall. All the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And I believe we are daunted with the task of trying to put the family back together again because that was one of uh, the family is supposed to reveal the truth about God to the world. And in order for that to take place, uh, the family must come back together. Yeah, I think in order to reveal the truth about God to the world, we have to reveal the truth about God within our families yes, sir. as well. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that's where it starts. We have to start somewhere. Absolutely. And so one of the things that, um, uh, actually, I got a, when, the call that I got, Dan, is centered around a, a young man who had been, uh, a group of youth were together. And um, uh, the reason for them being together is like most youth, they want to go out and have fun. And uh, in the context of them having fun, uh, they were uh, en- encountered. They encountered the authorities, uh, and this was the incident in Greensboro that's been over all the news. And when I think about situations like that, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about our youth and some of the decisions that they make, and some of the situations, you know, we get ourselves, they get themselves into. The first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, parenting. You know, you know, did the parents know where, uh, do parents know where their youth are? And I know we're living in a time now where a lot of parents, Dan, they, they dare to ask their youth where they're going or what's going on for fear of it turning into something explosive, an argument. And, and families would, some parents would rather just, you know, choose those battles uh, that they uh, engage in, um, uh, choose those battles. Uh, I can't even think of the word I want to use for, but in a way that it decreases uh, physical or verbal aggression. You know, I think there, there in in just saying that, yes, sir. just hearing that from from <laughs> my side of the table here, I realize that there has been a disconnect within the family if we can't have a conversation without. Um, fear, yes. I mean, truly fear mm-hmm. of it becoming an explosive situation. There is already um, the realization of the loss of control, the mm-hmm. loss of harmony within the home, yes. if it's already at that point where yes. we fear that a simple conversation will create uh, tension that we can't um, ride with. Absolutely. And I think that when even when I look at the, I was looking at some, some stats um about our youth 
And I was looking at a statistic that says that we have, and this is from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and they recently updated an official um, uh, mortality data that showed 45,222 firearm-related deaths in the United States in 2020, that this was a new peak. Now, this is, this is, this is amongst our youth. And so when I think about this happening, I, I begin to think more about uh, the book of Judges. It takes me back to that because we are truly dealing with another generation. And we're dealing with a generation that we communication amongst the family, around the dinner table, in the front yard, on vacation, riding in the car, all that has decreased. Everybody's head is in that telephone. Uh, when they get in the car, no matter what, at the dinner, they're in that telephone, social media. Uh, the parents are even in the telephone. And, and it's just come, it, it has become a way of escape so that we don't have to deal with the real life issues that confront the family a, each and every day. Now, in the book of Judges, uh, and it talks about the pattern of sin and judgment uh, in verses 1 through 5. But it would, after the death of Joshua, uh, starting at verse 6, where it says, Previously when Joshua had sent the people away, the Israelites had gone to take possession of the land, each of his own inheritance. It says, The people worshiped the Lord throughout Joshua's lifetime. Let's think about that. Throughout Joshua's lifetime and during the lifetime of the elders who outlived Joshua, they had seen all the Lord's great works he had done for Israel. It says, now Joshua, in verse 8, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, he died at the age of 110. They buried him in the territory of his inheritance in Tenneth Ares, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gosh. That whole generation was also gathered. Now, the whole generation, Dan, was also gathered to their ancestors. And the most important things here, after them, another generation rose up and what's so important, who did not know the Lord or the works he had done for Israel. So it begs a question, Dan, is that are we laying a foundation of the knowledge of God and the great works that he's done in our family? Are we laying, as parents, a foundation uh, relative to God and who we are and teaching our children who they are and living a life before them. In the good times, it, 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 everything's supposed to be all right in the good times. But when times are tough, are we still living that life that displays the character of God before our children so that they can see that they don't have to result to so many other things uh, that, only increases problems. You know, I've seen so many memes on on social media and mm-hmm. other places where you know they attribute this phrase that be, that begins with "We're only one gen- generation away from," you know, <laughs> and and then they attribute it to somebody. And I don't have time yeah. to research see if that person actually said it or not. But uh-huh. but there's something here when we look at this. When we look at Judges, mm-hmm. the second chapter, verses mm-hmm. six through ten, mm-hmm. we see that played out. We see where during the life of Joshua, who was known, his legacy yes. was was seen as godliness, mm-hmm. godliness uh, within Israel during yes. his leadership. He was truly one of history's great men of God. Yes, and the the um, generation immediately after him, you know, after he dies, those people. You know, the, the leaders among those people, yes, they knew who God was. Yes. They knew the mighty things that God had done. They knew mm-hmm. how God had carried them out from where they were into the new land that they inhabited. Yes. But then, like it says, as it gets close to mm-hmm. verse 10, mm-hmm. but this new generation, this new generation. Uh, basically, they had no 
personal relationship with God and no personal awareness of his power. Mm -hmm. And so God, to them, was someone their parents related to and who did great things Mm -hmm. for their parents' generation. Yes. But they were removed because it failed even just one generation later to be passed down as important to maintain a relationship with God. And when I look at the correlation mm-hmm. to where we are now, yes. that's what I see. Yeah, absolutely. Because the the reason and the, the, the question to ask is, why was there another generation? And this generation is has more of a focus on a generation without a foundation. Mm-hmm. We know that there's going to be another generation. There's always going to be another generation. Live long enough and you'll see that. But a generation, a new generation, should have been built on the old foundation, on that, uh, 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 let's say, any new building, any building we build today, we can take an old foundation that's in, still in great condition and has been inspected, and we can build a building on that. But it, we have found it most difficult for some reason to pass on the knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ, to our children. I don't know why fathers don't become the priest of their homes. I don't know why, if the father's not there, the mother is not sharing with the children what the Lord has done for her and how they've made it thus far only by the help of the Lord. Children aren't even, young people aren't even hearing Jesus' name in the home anymore. All the intakes our our uh, our company does, and we serve about 300 families a year, and I take the time to ask youth certain questions that give me insight into their uh, belief system about uh, something greater than themselves without talking about God, without talking about Christ, without bringing up the Holy Spirit. And I find myself walking away with an understanding that our young people are of a totally different mindset than that which would put them in the best position to be to understand the value they have. So where do people... Uh, what's the question? <laughs> yeah. where, do they, where do they get their value system if there's no if there's no godly moral that's accepted? If there's no moral base, mm-hmm. where do we where do we base our right and wrong in in, in the home, mm-hmm. in the community, in the workplace? Where do we get? What's the foundation? I mean, what are, what are yes, you sir. hearing back from from the generation that mm-hmm. you work with on a regular basis? What do you hear back? What is the foundation of any of their belief system? Is there a common thread somewhere? Yeah, the the, the foundation of their belief system is themselves, me. Hmm. You know, they're doing it for me. It's all about me. You know, I got to get me first. You know, I, I got to do me. Oh, I'm doing me. You know, and my next question is, who is me? See, because they have no idea who they are. And so what they find themselves doing is gravitating to any and everything that makes them feel good. If it doesn't make them feel good, they don't want anything really to do with it. Now, we all don't like pain. We all want to have a good time all the time if we could snap our fingers and that could happen. But the question is, what is a good time? Because a good time is something different for everyone. The best time Uh, at the stage we are at in life is a time with Christ Jesus because now we get to be introduced to who we really are. That should start in the home. You know, when we were growing up, there wasn't a time that you didn't hear. Man, in my grandmother's house, in my parents' house, in my mom and dad, I mean, every lesson had a biblical principle attached to it. Every lesson was about self-discipline. They were laying a foundation even though I was building rubbish on it. They laid a foundation that when I would come when I came to my senses, I wouldn't leave the foundation. I'd come back to it and have an, uh, a, a clear understanding now of why they were teaching me or what they taught me when we were growing up. But in today's society, 
parents don't, most parents don't, because we have parents that are really doing, they're, they're doing everything that they can do. But the influences of the world are pulling at our kids so hard, and we have to truly understand that we are really in a battle, a battle for the minds of man. A battle for the mind of man's children. That is a battle you only, you don't see it until it manifests itself in some act. And the acts that we have been seeing are ones that are detrimental to society. And we find ourselves where we are and we look to, um, we look to the government we look to the coaches, we look to the schools, we look to uh, the teachers in the school, we look to the world system to fix what only man who is in a relationship with God can repair. You know, what we're reading here in yes, uh, Judges chapter 2, what you're talking about, you know, from the the legacy and the foundations that your family elders yes, um, um, were passing down to you and what you're talking about with these mm-hmm. young people who you see, you know, to the tune of 300 a year. What we see is the same thing that you and I have talked about yes, so many times yes. in the recent past. It is, it stems from a lack of identity, not even mm-hmm. understanding who we are, yes. not realizing we were made in God's image, Absolutely. we don't we don't go back to the first of the book because uh-uh. we disregard the book. Yes, and, yeah. and I say we yeah. as our collective yeah. culture. Absolutely. Now, I was just reading an article today, uh-huh. um, and it was it was actually a really good article, and it was <laughs> it was a uh, you know based around some LGBTQ issues, uh-huh. and it was I man I needed a new dictionary to <laughs> even understand <laughs> yes, this yes. stuff because it's like you know all these these new terms, and they all said. I don't know who I am. Yes. Every bit of it. Yes, yes. And that's the, that is a truth. See, the, the, one of the first steps in, in, in getting better is realizing where you are, admitting the truth to yourself. And that is a true statement. There, uh, uh, man, there, if you had 10 people in a room, I mean, you know, nine of them are going to tell you uh, 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 they don't know who they are if they, tell, if they tell you the truth. You may have one, all 10 might say, oh, one might say, well, what do you mean? That lets you know that they don't know who they are, because that's a question that's easy to answer when you know who you are, when God has revealed to you who you are. And that is who you are, who he says you are. When, you know, a manufacturer makes a product, he calls it what he, uh, he names it what he knows it is, what he wants it to be. It may not look that, like that to me or you, but that's what it is. I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't look like a boot. Well, that's a boot because he calls it a boot. He made it. He's the manufacturer. You know what I'm saying? I think one of the things that we have to really t- grasp and understand in verse 10 here, the Israelite parents, they have failed. They had failed horribly to, to transfer uh, their 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 teachings, their their uh, spiritual um, understanding. They they failed to transfer what they knew about God and His great exploits to the children, which began this spiritual breakdown of the culture. And we have been broken down since that time because we continue to move farther and farther and farther away from God, allowing man to define us. Now, this is man who does not know who he is, is telling us uh, what should be or what this or that is. Well, if man would submit to uh, the authority and, 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 and rulership of God, we could fix this very quick. We see parents and we see families uh, that are doing this. So we see uh, good examples of it. But for some reason, we, that repels the majority. For some reason, that repels the majority. Now, if we were to give some insight into why, then we'd probably be told we were wrong. And the why would be because they don't want to. 
There you go. And that, <laughs> that completely stems from what you said. You know, they, they find their identity. They find their everything. Their, their source, their foundation is me. Yes. And so if it doesn't feel good to me, it can't be right. It can't be true in that context. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, our children uh, and many of us, we may not see the benefit of the education that we're getting. I didn't see the benefit of my father uh, wanting me to stay in the yard and not go outside, you know, the, 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 the little fence we had going around our front yard on Washington Drive here off the Murchison Road. We, he, I, didn't, yeah, I didn't understand the benefit of that, but what he saw, the traffic, the cars coming. And he knew that if we ran out there and we had the ball, we're going to go chase the ball if it goes in the street without looking both ways. So our parents, being the leaders, they see more than we see, and they see before, you know, we see. I didn't understand the benefits of that. Now I do because, you know, I, I have a daughter. You know, I, I, I understand more so now, but I take the time to understand it because of the foundation that was laid. I reflect back on, okay, this is why. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want me doing this. Our children today, they look back, they don't see anything. They don't see anything written on the board that they can go back and say, okay, well, this is why, okay, let me go forward and move in the knowledge of this. They don't see that because society has tugged and pulled on our parents so much. And something that we really probably... Many would probably not contribute to the issue that we're having with our youth today and the lack of a focus on uh, knowing who Christ is and time to have that focus and teach. But, man, we've gotten into so much debt that parents are working two, three, four, five jobs. So when Johnny comes home from school, Johnny is coming home from school to a home where dad may be going to work or coming off work on his way to another job. Mom is doing the same thing. She may not have even gotten off of her shift yet, but she laid some things out that Johnny's supposed to put together for dinner for the kids to have something until she got home. Now, Johnny's there taking care of 12-year-old, Susie and uh, five-year-old Billy. Um, uh, Johnny has so much responsibility on him that he's not even enjoying his life as a kid, you know? And so we find ourselves taking our total focus, total focus off of what really matters. And what really matters is parents, bringing up their children in the admonition of the Lord because he shares with us to not worry about food, what we're going to drink and clothing, but to seek the kingdom of God first and all these things that we need each and every day will be given to us because those things are in the kingdom. But we're outside of it and thinking we're in it because we're saved. But we're not practicing any of heaven's rule in our lives. You know, I just want to preface what I'm about to say with this. We, <laughs> we have messed up yes. raising our children, my wife yeah, and I. We, there, are, there are some places yeah. where we have um, undeniably made mistakes, yes. and we have grieved those mistakes yes. more than twice. Yes. But at the same time, you know, we made choices, and mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying this to say, you know, this is how you do it. I'm saying mm-hmm. this is to say that we, we built our marriage. We came to Christ early in our marriage, um, and we had one child, one mm-hmm. small child at mm-hmm. the time. And raising our child to know the God that we had just met personally was really, really important to us. Mm-hmm. So my kids, they grew up knowing what it was to have... Um, thrift shop clothes. Yes. They grew up knowing what it was like <laughs> to shop at a yard sale, yeah. you know, because we made the choice <laughs> that my wife would not go to work yes. until they were in full-time school. Mm-hmm. That was that was our choice to do that because we saw the importance of having the family together and of raising those kids. And while we made mistakes and things happened along the way that we deeply regret, at the same time, 
mm-hmm. I look at my children and I realize they have a great work ethic. Yes. They understand what it is to respect both authority, yes. uh, authority of, of any magnitude that th- is around them, whether that's someone they, they work with or work for, or whether that's the authorities, you know, within the legal construct mm-hmm. or whether it is just within the family. Absolutely. They, they, they understand what authority is and what authority means when it rests yes. on your shoulders yes. as well. Absolutely. And what we don't have is that understanding. Some of our youth have become so disrespectful that some adults, I mean, you don't even want to be in a company uh, because it's a, it's a, you, you just, you can't believe some of the things that come out of their mouths. But one way that we can resolve uh, this and get things back on track is uh, Proverbs chapter four, uh, and it's basically uh, a proverb about a father's example. And that's number one. We have to get fathers back into the homes. When we get fathers back into the homes, and fathers doing or becoming the examples that God w- would have them to be, that God designed them to be. Uh, l- listen to what Proverbs chapter four says. It says, "Listen, sons, to a father's." Discipline and pay attention so that you may gain understanding. For I am giving you good instruction. Don't abandon my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender and precious to my mother, he taught me and said, Your heart must hold on to my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Don't forget or turn away. For the words from my mouth, don't abandon wisdom, and she, wisdom, will watch over you. Love her, and she will guard you. Wisdom is supreme, so get wisdom. And whatever else you get, get understanding. Cherish her, wisdom, and she will exalt you, wisdom. If you embrace her wisdom, she will honor you. She will place a garland of favor on your head. She will give you a crown of beauty. And with this understanding, see, fathers, we have to get back in our rightful place. Man, man, not males, because we have a lot of males. We talked about that before. But we're talking about man, man who understands who He is man who is in a relationship with a loving God, who is protecting and taking care of him, who's leading, who's guiding him, who is teaching him how to raise his children and what to pass on to them. This is the job of a man. So every uh, uh, man that's listening today, if you're not with the young lady that you have children with, get back with those children. Have a relationship with her so that you guys can come together to raise the children. You came together to have them. Lord knows you can come together to raise them. And fathers who are working so hard and not taking that time, pushing it off on the mom, stop that. Get back and raise your children because fathers are supposed to raise the children, not the mother. You know, I'm so glad you, that you brought that out because I thought, wow, we're really doing a good job of pointing out the problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 25 minutes with yeah, the conversation, yeah, we yeah. haven't pointed toward any solution yeah. yet. And, you know, this is Tuesday, yes. and that's already the second time this week that I have had somebody point me toward that passage wow. in Proverbs wow. 4, you know, and you could summarize it all mm-hmm. as get wisdom. Yes. You know, yes. and it is the father's place. Yes. It, it, you know, and, and and like you mentioned early on, you know, if the father is not there, the father mm-hmm. is not in the home for yes. whatever reason, yes. then it's the mother's place yes. to get that true wisdom. We're not yes. talking about, you know, get some book learning. Yeah. We're talking about getting wisdom, yes. the kind of wisdom that comes from God yes, on, right. you know, seeking that power yes, that, right. you know, you, like you ask those, yes, sir. Um, those young people that you do mm-hmm. uh, intakes with in, yeah. in your, your business, you know, you, um, you're asking them what their source is. Yes. And if they have no source, man, you know, I, I, I can't imagine um, your, your scenario uh-huh. because you, can't necessarily point them 
directly toward it, but mm-hmm. you can certainly mm-hmm. begin to corral them like yes. maybe like a yes. sheepdog kind of yes. kind of yes. push them yes. toward that yes. that gate yes. that they need to walk through. Absolutely, and I, I'd always um, I always talk to the Lord when I'm dealing in counseling or therapy. Being uh, my PhD is in the philosophy of Christian counseling, so we clearly understand how to bridge the gap between secular uh, and Christian counseling. So we use the biblical principles in order to get to create the bridge for us to cross over to them and then for the walk back to us and then to ask us for the reason of the hope that is in us. Because once the counselee asks that question, the doors are open. And you can have the more in-depth conversation uh, with them and the parent. Uh, because we get so many phone calls. I mean, Dan, I get calls every single day, all through the night, uh, where parents want me to talk with their children. And they want me to help their children. My focus, after talking with their child, now how can I help you? Or do you think you need some help? Because the child is not broken. You know, some of them say, fix my child. The child's not broken. He's just been in an, or she's been in an environment that's not conducive to who they were designed to be. So we can look at, at home, let's change the environment that the youth is in. In order to change the environment, mom and dad, we have to learn how to think correctly. So that means we have to help you Change how you think about you, because what you're seeing in your child is what you have taught them. Now, a lot of times parents think about it in the context, well, it's not my fault. Well, we're not talking about blame. We're talking about you having the ability to respond appropriately. Responsibility. And this is all good stuff. And, you know, it is so where we are culturally right now. I mean, we just have to talk about these things. We have to bring that foundation back into our home. We have to understand what authority rests on us and how we relate that and how we begin to build a solid foundation for our children every single day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Once again, thank you so much for being here with us. I hope you'll join us again next week and you can always find a copy of this conversation and more when you visit the podcast page at Christian1057.com. You've been listening to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. Join us again next time as we explore the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Your Life airs Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on Christian 105.7, and you can always download, listen, and share online. Just look for Your Life wherever you listen to podcasts.